Hey, what's up, class? Welcome back. This is part two of Intro to Functions. This is a new concept we're learning, functions. It's a fancy word for a linear equation, a two-variable equation. So we did part one, and we're going to do a little quick review, and then we'll finish up these notes. So you should have these notes in front of you. They are called Intro to Functions. So let me go ahead and flip over to the DocuCam, and we'll get started. Okay, so intro to functions. This is this word functions is the academic word or the mathematical word for an input output equation. So in our last lesson, I gave you this really simple um, input output equation and we did the math, we did the input and the output. And then we took these ordered pairs, remember that concept ordered pairs and we brought them down here and we wrote them um, in a list and we put the ordered pairs together one with three two with five five with ten ten with 21 and when we list them with these brackets or braces this is now called a relation so we just listed them as a relation and then the next thing that we learned was i gave you a real life example of base jumping and an equation for free falling objects. So when people do base jumping or they do skydiving, they wanna know um, how far are they gonna fall? What's the distance they're gonna fall in a certain amount of time before they have to pull the rip cord on their parachute, right? No one wants to hit that ground and splat. Um, so they, everyone wants to survive, so they wanna pull that parachute in time, but they also love the adrenaline of free falling. And so there's a formula to help them know how far they can fall um, in a certain amount of time. So we looked at that and we did an input output. We plugged in our totals, plugged in our input and our output. And then we wrote those totals down here as a relation. And then what we left off with was I introduced this concept of a data table. So this concept of a data table. So a data table is when you take your ordered pairs and you list them in a table. This is called a data table. And the very final thing that we left off on was I gave you a strategy to remember these ordered pairs. And I said, think of them as dance partners. Think of them as, um, in fact, like a quinceanera, a court of honor. Okay, so one is dancing with negative 16, two with negative 64, three with negative 144, and four is dancing with 256. Now, you'll see in a few minutes why I came up with this concept of dance partners. Okay, all right, so here we go. We're going to move on to page three of the notes. And on page three, we are going to take a new relation. So we have this relation, one comma five, two comma four, three comma three, four comma two, and five comma one. And we are going to display this data. We're gonna display this relation in three ways. Okay, so here we go. So the first way is in a table. Now, remember I used that concept of dance partners. So I want you to display these numbers in this table, but I want you to think of the first number, the X value. I want you to think of that as the guys. And I want you to think of the second number, the dance partner as the gals. Okay, so like a quinceanera. So one is dancing with five. So we're gonna go one, five. Two is dancing with four, so two, four. Three is dancing with three, 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 four, two, five, one. And I want you to think of the X as the first number and the Y as uh, the second number. And this is the guys and this is the gals. Okay. So we just took this relation, five ordered pairs, one, two, three, four, five, and we listed them in a table. Okay. Now, um, for those of you that have participated in a quinceanera, here's a question for you. When you are learning your dance, 
So you've got a dance or a couple of dances that you do. When you're learning your dance, usually there's some type of a dance instructor, um, a professional dancer that will come and teach you the dance. So when you're learning the dance in formal dancing in a quinceanera, who leads in the dance? Is it the guy or is it the girl that leads? Well, if you've participated in one of these, then you know that it's the guy who is supposed to lead. The girl is supposed to follow what the guy directs. And he directs with his hands, his hands when you're holding hands and his hand on her hip or on her back. So the guy is the one that directs. So I want you to just write that down really quickly. So in formal dancing, in formal dancing, the guy leads. And I want you to think of it as the X goes first when graphing, okay? The guy leads, the X goes first when graphing. All right, so now let's go ahead and we are going to take these data pairs and we are going to graph them right here in this graph. So remember, I just said the guy leads, the guy goes first, the X goes first. So we're gonna start with the number on the X axis. So I'm gonna come up here and this is my X axis right here. That's the X axis. And over here is the Y axis. So we're gonna start with this number and we're gonna go over one and then go find his dance partner. And he's dancing with five. So we're gonna go up there and we are going to make a point. That's where they're going to meet. One is dancing with five. Then we're going to go to the next one. Two is dancing with four. So this is on the x-axis. Here's on the x-axis. So two is dancing with four. And then we're going to go to the next one. Three is dancing with three. So we're going to go over one, two, three, and up one, two, three, right there. And then the next one is four comma two. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, up one, two, right to there. And then five, one, one, two, three, four, five, up one, five comma one, okay? All right, so we have a table. This is called a table. This is called a graph. So we just graphed and then there's one more and this one is called a mapping diagram. And just go ahead and copy it down and then I'll explain. So a mapping diagram, a mapping diagram kind of looks like a table, right? This has got your T chart and over here, it kind of looks the same thing, but there are some differences. So I'll explain them to you as you're drawing this in. So one, so this arrow tells us kind of who, who one is dancing with. So one is dancing with five. Two's dancing with four, three's dancing with three, four's dancing with two, and five is dancing with one. Now, when you make a mapping diagram, when you take your data, your pairs, and you put them in a mapping diagram, you have to put this, I call it bubble wrap, you know, that kind of that packaging bubble wrap. You gotta put bubble wrap around it. And the other thing is you gotta have these arrows. The arrows tell you, who they're dancing with. So one, draw that arrow is dancing with five. Two's dancing with four, three with three, four with two, and five with one. Okay, so this is three different ways. Um, this is really simplistic. It gets more complicated when you get to higher math, but for right now, here's three different ways of displaying data. So you have a table, you have a graph, and you have a mapping diagram, okay? All right, so let's move on. Okay, now here's a big question, is to decide, is something a function or not a function? So this is, this is the big question. Is it a function or not a function, okay? So in order to be a function, in order for something to be called a function, to have that word, each X value can be paired with only one Y value, okay? So each X value can only be paired with one Y value. So what the heck do I mean by that? 
So X value can be paired with only one Y value. So let me show you. We'll look at a few examples here and then we'll decide, okay? So let's look at this one right here. And you tell me, does that look like it's a function or not? So remember the definition is each X value can be paired with only one Y value. So one is dancing with five, two is dancing with four, three is dancing with three, four is dancing with two. So all the guys, right? These are the guys, all the guys only have one dance partner. So if they only have one dance partner, then we would say, yep, that's a function. Okay, so that's a good one. Okay, all right, now let's look at the next one over here. Okay, so this next one, let me get my card. So in this next one looks like this. So let's take a look at this. So one is dancing with five, two is dancing with four, but wait a second, it looks like two has another, is dancing with a three. Now this three is dancing with that three and four is dancing with two. So this one's good, this one's good. This one, three is only dancing with one number, but this guy is a two timer, all right? So he's two timing. So he's like, he's like at the dance and he's, his partner, he brought four to the dance and then when four goes to the restroom, he's over here dancing with three. So this guy's a two timer. So we would say not a function, okay? So if you notice over here, every one of these has only one partner. But here, this guy is a two timer. And if there's a two timer, if any of the guys have more than one dance partner, more than one pair, then it's not a function, not a function. Okay, all right, let's look at this last one. This one's gonna be kind of tricky. Let's see about this one. Okay. All right, so remember, we're looking at the X values. We're looking at the guys. Do the guys all have one dance partner? Think about it for a second. So one is dancing with the four. He's only dancing with one person. Two is dancing with the four. He's only dancing with one person. Three is dancing with the four. And four is dancing with the four. So this one actually is a function. It is a function. And the reason is because all the X values only have one dance partner. Okay. This is like, she's like the dance instructor, right? So she's takes a turn with him, and then she takes a turn with him, and then she takes a turn with him, she takes a turn with him. She's like the instructor. So it's okay for the Y value to have more than one dance partner. That's why the arrows are going, the arrows are going that way because the X can only have one dance partner to be considered a function. So this one, this relation is considered a function. Okay, so remember, remember to be a function, each X value can have only one dance partner. No two timers, right? Think of Cinderella, poor Cinderella. If she knew that Prince Charming had a whole bunch of other girls he was dancing with, that would break her heart, right? Prince Charming only had one dance partner right? That was his true love was Cinderella. So no two timers. Okay. Uh, girls, little life lesson, make sure that uh, you are going after the guy that only wants you. No two timers. Stay away from the two timers. Okay. Now, so functions can only have one, um, one dance partner. Okay. Let's move on. There's a couple of ways that we can determine if, a, if something is a function or not, these are called function tests. So I'm gonna move on to the next page. And a function test. Okay, 
So this is a mathematical test. So we want to test, we want to test the equation to determine um, or whether or not it's a function, right? So this is what we want to figure out. We want to figure out, is it a function or not? Okay, whether or not it's a function. That's what we're trying to figure out. Okay, so one way to do it is um, to just make an input output chart. So here's our, this is our um, function right here, or this is our equation, right? We want to find out, is this equation a function? So we're going to set this up. And when you're testing, when you're doing a mathematical test, over here for your input, you wanna pick some numbers that are negative and you also wanna pick some numbers that are positive, okay? And as we do more of these, you'll understand why, but we wanna make sure we're checking negative numbers and we're also checking positive numbers. Now you could pick any numbers you want. I just picked small ones that are easy to work with, but you wanna make sure you have some negatives and you have some positives. So let's plug in negative two. When I plug that in, we're gonna get two times negative two. So we're gonna get negative four minus two, which makes negative six. And there is our pair, right? So we just made an ordered pair. Now let's try the next one. If I plug in negative one on your paper, you're copying all this down. So we got two times negative one that's going to be negative two minus two. There's our minus two. Negative two minus two is negative four. So now we have another ordered pair. Okay, now I'm going to plug in zero. So I'm going to plug in zero. So two times zero is zero minus two. Zero minus two is negative two. So there's my next ordered pair, zero and negative two. Now I'm going to plug in one. So I come up here, plug in one. So I get two times one is two minus two. Two minus two is zero. So over here, I got one comma zero. And then I'm gonna take the number two and go plug that in. Two times two is four minus two is two. Okay, so now the question is, now that we've got these listed, so here's our question is this up here, this, is this a function or not a function? Which one is it? A function or not a function? That's the question, okay? That's the question. So let's look. Look at your X values. These are the guys. And let's see if any of these has more than one dance partner. He's got one dance partner. He's got one dance partner. He has one dance partner. He has one dance partner. And he has one dance partner. So we would say, yep, that's a function. So go ahead and you can circle function. I don't wanna do it on my notes because I wanna use these again, but this one would be a function. You'd go ahead and circle that right there. That would be a function. So this equation, two X minus two is equal to Y, is a function and we know that because we did a mathematical test and we found out okay all right now there are some other ways to figure out if something is a function or not and that's by looking at the graph and this is called a vertical line test this is probably something that you've seen before maybe this is a little rusty or like oh i remember that so a vertical line test so a vertical line test if you draw a vertical line through the graph, so we're gonna look at a graph, and it hits the graph only one time, then we would say the graph is a function, okay? So if it only hits one time, okay? If there's only one time where it hits the graph, um, then we know it's a function, okay? So let's take a look at this example here, this, this first example right here. So the graph is this dashed line right here. See that curve right here? And then I drew a vertical line. Remember vertical means straight up and down. So if you draw a vertical line through the graph, so I drew that vertical line. So how many times is my vertical line hitting my actual graph? 
while it's sitting there and there. Well, then that would be not a function, right? So down here, is it a function or not a function? This one would be not a function. And the reason is because it hit twice, but you're only allowed to hit once. It's only allowed to hit one time. So if we draw our vertical line, then what that means is this X value that's right here, remember this is our X axis. So this one, he's got a partner up there and he has a partner down there, right? He has a dance partner there and he has a dance partner down there. He's a two-timer. And if he's a two-timer, then we would say not a function, not a function. So circle that, okay? And then let's check this one here, okay? Our graph, is the dashed black line right there. Okay, so let's do a vertical line. Now on this one, I'm just gonna use this right here. Here's a vertical line right here. It's called the Y axis. So I'm gonna use this vertical line right here. And let's see how many times does this vertical line, how many times does it hit our graph? And it looks like it hits it right there right there, that's the only place, right? Here's our vertical line. So this one curved, right? There was a curve, so it hit there and it hit there. But on this one, that line, that diagonal line only hits our vertical line. It only hits it right there, right? Right at that spot. So we would say on this one, we would say this is a function. This is a function right there. Okay, that's a function. Okay, all right, our last page, we're almost done with our notes. Um, and these are all introductory concepts. So if you're a little confused, um, these are just notes. We're gonna be working on this, these concepts. So I don't expect you to memorize it the first time. Okay, I'm just introducing them to you. Okay, so the last thing that we're gonna talk about today is something called the domain and the range the domain and the range, okay? The domain and the range. All right, so these are fancy words. These are academic words. And um, the input value, so remember our X value, we call that the input. Well, its real name is the domain. We're supposed to call it the domain, but input is a little easier to understand. So our X value, that's our input. It's the domain and our Y value, which I call the output, that's the range, okay? So we've got an input and an output. Our input is the domain. Our output is actually called the range. So I'm gonna give you a list of names. So we're gonna make sure we can keep track of this. So here's some other names for domain and range. Here's our little input output machine. Right, we've got an input and then an output. So the domain and range. So our domain, remember, is our X variable. It is the input. So when we talk about the domain, we're talking about the X variable. The domain is your input. And then here's a new concept. It's also called the independent variable. We're gonna eventually start using this word also. So all four of these mean the same thing. The domain, the X variable, the input, and the independent variable. Okay, and then over here, your range is your Y variable. It's the output, and it's called the dependent variable. So we're gonna learn about these later on. I'm just introducing them. So all four of these mean the same thing. All of these mean the same thing. So if I say the Y variable, I'm talking about the range. If I say the output, I'm still talking about the range, okay? All right, so the final thing that we're gonna do is we're going to take number 18, we're gonna take the data from the relation below. So we're gonna look at a relation below. We're gonna list the domain and range. So we're gonna separate them. And then we're gonna make a mapping diagram and we're gonna decide whether the relation is a function or not a function. Okay, so we're gonna take a relation 
and we're going to list the domain and range. And then we are going to make a mapping diagram. And then we're going to decide, is it a function or not a function? OK, so here's our relation. So the first thing is, let's count how many ordered pairs we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So six ordered pairs, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you think of um, like a court of honor, there's six pairs, six partners, okay? All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna list our domain. So we wanna pull out all of the X values. The X value is always that first, um, it's always the first one, the first number in the pair. Remember, we said the guy goes first, right? So this is always the X. And this one is always the Y. Okay, so we've got an X comma Y. All right, so and then this would be our X and our Y, our X and our Y, X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. So what I want to do is I want to list all the X values. So I'm gonna pull out the five, that three, that two, that four, that five, and that one. So five, three, two, four, five, and one. Okay, so I'm gonna pull all of those out. So in fact, I'll, well, I'm not gonna draw arrows in there. I'll just, you can just, that goes with that, that three goes there, that two goes there, that four goes there, that five goes there and that one goes there. So that's called the domain, okay? Those are the domain, the X values, okay? Now, the range are all the Y values, okay? So the range is the second number, four, two, six, seven, three, and one. Four, two, six, seven, three, and one, okay? That's our range. All right, now, the next thing that we're gonna do, so we've got our domain and our range listed. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make a mapping diagram. And I'm going to list, I'm going to list my domain, but I'm gonna put them in order. So if you notice, I'm putting them in order from um, smallest to biggest. Now that wasn't the first number, but I'm going to look at these and I'm going to go, okay, well, what's my smallest number? That's a one. So I got one. And then do I have a two? Yep. We got a two and then a three and then a four. And then notice there's this five and there's this five. There's, he shows up twice. Okay. So I've listed them one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Now we're going to go and match up their dance partners. Okay, so let's go look up at our relation. Who's one dancing with? So if I look right there, so one is dancing with a different one. Two, who's two dancing with? Let's see right there. So two is dancing with six. Who's three dancing with? So if I look, three is dancing with two right there. And also, if you notice, if you notice, I have them right here, right? One's dancing with one, two's dancing with six, three's dancing with two. So where's my four? Right there, four's dancing with seven. And then how about the five? Well, five is dancing with, he's here dancing with three, but this is the same five. Those are the same guy. He's also dancing with four. So we're gonna list it like that. So here's the question. Is it a function or not a function? Okay, so what do you think? So remember, to be a function, you can't have any two timers. Every X value has to have only one Y value. Okay, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. No good, no bueno. This guy right here, he's a bad dude. He's a two-timer, right? He's dancing with four. He's also dancing with three. So we would say 
not a function, not a function right here. This messed it up right here. So not a function, okay? All right, so we made, we took the relation, we broke it into the domain and the range. We made a mapping diagram. This is a mapping diagram right here. And then we decided if it was a function or not a function. Okay, the final thing that you're going to do is down here on number 19, for this last point, you need to write yourself one tip that you think is important or one question that you still have. Okay, so go ahead and write, explain one tip. So one thing that you think is important about functions. If you say something like, oh, I think this was a nice lesson, you don't get a point, right? You need to explain something about functions. So go back and look at your notes and explain something. Or if you have a question, something you're confused about, you can go ahead and write your question and then I will see that question. Okay, so write yourself one thing that you think is important or one question that you still have. Okay, and all right. So I know that was a really long lesson. That's why I broke it into two videos. So we've got a part one and a part two, and we're gonna keep working on that. So I gave you a lot of new concepts there. Okay, all right, you guys have a good rest of your day complete your notes and turn that assignment in. Okay. I'll see you guys. Bye.